Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crowley. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Today we're going to be learning how to draw Hatsune Miku, except it's going to be the chibi version, and it's going to be full color, unlike uh, my previous video on this subject. Now you'll see we have uh, three different lines here. They are two inches uh, apart, or in centimeters, uh, five uh, centimeters, uh, between each of the lines, and uh, these top two lines are going to show us where to place uh, the guideline for the head. And speaking of which, let's just just go ahead and do that. All right, so as you can see, it's uh, more or less just a circle. Uh, don't concern yourself with making it absolutely perfect. Just do your best. And uh, now we can move on to placing a line um, for helping us get the eyes in the right place. Okay, so as you can see, I've just put a line here. I would say it's just slightly lower than uh, halfway, um, you know, a little closer to the bottom or the this sort of middle line than it is to this top line. And I've put it at a slight angle because I want the character be, to be sort of jumping to the side a little bit. Her head will be just tilted ever so slightly. Um, now I can use this line here to show me where the tops of each uh, of the eyes will go. So let's go ahead and get those into place. Okay, so as you can see, these are uh, basically oval-shaped eyes, uh, except they're a little bit flattened on the bottom. That, that is a way of suggesting uh, happiness, like the eyes are starting to squint just a little bit into a smile. And um, basically what I would uh, uh, tell you to do is uh, pay attention to the height from top to bottom, uh, basically about halfway, maybe just a little past the halfway point between those two uh, lines there, and then also uh, focus on the distance between them. There's uh, maybe more than one ovals worth of dis distance between these two um, lines, which will be the irises uh, of uh, both eyes. Well, let's go ahead and uh, move on to drawing the basic uh, lines of the body. All right, now this is a greatly simplified uh, shape here, um, but uh, later on I'll be refining it into the fairly detailed uh, um, way that her clothes are actually drawn. Um, let's go ahead now. I'm going to draw uh, just the arms uh, in the pose that I'm going to be using. You could choose a different pose, but uh, let's go ahead and get the lines in place. All right, so you can see the shape of these arms that kind of flared at the end. This is going to be uh, her arm warmers, I guess you would call them. She, these interesting sleeves that she uh, wears as part of her uniform. Does she, is it a uniform <laughs> that she's wearing? Maybe, I'm not sure. Does she have any other change of clothing? Uh, please let me know in the comment section. But uh, we're getting closer to getting all of the basic guidelines in place here. I'm going to do um, the lines of the legs, and the last thing uh, probably we'll do uh, are the gigantic uh, pigtails on either side of the head. But first, let's go ahead and get the legs in place. All right, well, the first thing that I would point out is the length of this one leg. It goes just across this line um, by a little bit. And, um, you know, if you've paid attention to the length of the dress, which is itself maybe a little bit past the halfway point, uh, then you should be able to get that uh, right where you need it to be. This leg here is uh, foreshortened, so it's bent at the knee, and then the foot is back behind it. We'll be getting into the details of that more later. But let's go ahead and get in these last um, guidelines of the hair. All right, well, we finally got all the basic guidelines in place, and we can start getting into the details. What I'm going to do now is uh, zoom in just a little bit uh, so that we can start drawing the facial features. Okay, well, I'm going to try to do as much of this real-time as possible. Let's uh, get into drawing one of these eyes. Now, as I said, this is the iris, so I'm going to go ahead and start adding uh, a little bit of the detail here. There's going to be a uh, highlight um, at the top of uh, both of the irises, fairly common in uh, all sorts of manga illustrations. And then I'm drawing a second line here, uh, oval on the inside, that would be the pupil, except it's extremely large and <laughs> dilated um, compared to real uh, anatomy, but um, especially with chibis, I, I almost never see a tiny little iris. It's almost always um, um, very enlarged like this, which makes them sort of bigger and shinier looking somehow, and just sort of deeper looking, I guess. I would say. And now it's time to add the fairly simple uh, uh, eyelash uh, line, which um, is uh, starting up here, sort of breaks away uh, from the top of the eye, comes over here, and you know, you can have it almost follow a perfect circle if you want. You can give it a little bit of an angle over here um, that would sort of indicate the um, where the upper eyelash um, comes to a point and, or, or joins with the, um, the lower eyelash. But I've seen some people just have that be completely rounded. And if you like, you can also 
um, take this flattened area down here and sort of have that poke out a little bit to suggest that that is indeed the lower eyelash. I'm going to get one more line over here which is the fold of the upper eyelid. And, uh, you know, this may be a little weird, but I'm going to go ahead and jump to doing the eyebrow. And then we'll do the, you know, the replication of all that in time lapse over here, since it's, you know, essentially the same thing. Um, you do want to focus on the distance between the eye and the uh, eyebrows, and also the, the curvature. Sounds like a medical term. <laughs> the eyebrow curvature. Is there any medicine she can take for that? Um, the uh, curvature of the uh, eyebrow is just sort of a gentle curve. Um, but I would focus mainly on the distance. You don't want that to be too low or too high. Um, so let's go ahead and use time lapse just to uh, do the exact same thing on the other side here. All right, so now we can move on to drawing the mouth. I'm skipping the nose. That's one of the nice things about the uh, chibi style is very often there is no nose at all. Uh, you may choose to indicate one if you want, but if you do, I would say keep it really small and, and subtle. Um, I'm just dra drawing a super cheerful, happy, smiley face, um, leaving a little distance between like the bottom of the eyes and the top of the mouth. Um, I'm going to put a single line back here for the, the tongue, indicating the tongue. And I feel like I might need to uh, work a little bit on the shape of the cheeks here, so I'm going to lightly erase and um, sort of change this from a perfect circle to a little more of a um, triangle. To me it almost looks like the home plate in baseball. It's very, very hard for me to describe this shape, but you can sort of see what I'm doing here. And the key, uh, I would say, is to focus on the distance. As you come up here uh, along the cheek, you want to make sure that you do the same thing over here get them the same distance from one another. So you're creating the same shape. Alright, now I'm going to try to stay in real time for a while here as I begin to draw the basic guidelines of the hair. And um, uh, with any manga character, the hairstyle is pretty key to um, making that character identifiable uh, in a way. The, the hairstyle is what makes them very often look different from other characters. And uh, uh, Hatsune Miku has uh, sort of a three-tiered... Is tier the right word? I don't know. There's <laughs> three parts to her hair up here at the top, and you definitely want to get in at least one strand that is cutting across her forehead. Boy, that sounds violent. <laughs> cutting. It's cutting across her forehead. Um, no, it is just sort of uh, swooping bending across her forehead, pointing down towards this one eye. It's um, fairly narrow from side to side. And then over here, I'm actually going to curve this one in, uh, in the opposite direction. You can see me sort of moving around here to, to get the natural pivot point of my wrist as I try to get this extra, much larger piece of hair. And notice this, the, uh, how close it comes to the eye as it comes down here. And I'm going to have this extend all the way down to around here, this big swoop of hair. I decided not to have the circle of her head be the sort of imaginary top of her skull, uh, but to rather just make it be the hair itself. There's different ways of doing this, and I thought, you know, let's just make this be the hair. Now what happens, though, to this, um, to the contour line up here is it does um, break in a little bit to suggest a uh, part to the hair. So, I don't know if that's showing up very well, but you may want to get just a little bit of a indentation there. I'm going to get, I'm going to put one extra strand here, sort of poking off to the side. And then I want to adjust the length of this so that it comes way down pretty much to this uh, second line, this middle line. I'm trying to widen this out a bit and give a bit more body to that hair. And that gives us the basic lines. In fact, I think I'll leave it at that for now. Later on, maybe during the inking stage, I'm going to be adding a bit more detail uh, to this part of the hair. But uh, for now, let's move on and start working on these gigantic 
pigtails. Um, sort of interesting, the length of her pigtails is uh, extraordinary, really, and that's, I think, one of the defining characteristics of Hatsune Miku. Now, some of you may remember that I did a uh, video uh, on Hatsune uh, Miku about, uh, what was it, two years ago? Uh, that one was the sort of full-sized Hatsune Miku, and this time we're doing the chibi, so you get a little variety. Also, I'm, uh, that one was all in black and white, and I kind of regretted that decision because the color scheme um, of Hatsune Miku is pretty crucial to to the character, you know, something I mean, like Batman, for example, you could draw in black and white, and I don't think that would be a problem because it's the color is not such a big deal. But with Hatsune Miku, boy, you, if you don't have at least that green, that greenish blue color of her hair and parts of her clothing, I think you sort of lose the Mikuness. <laughs> There is a distinct lack of meekness to that early video because of uh, not having the color. Well, I'm going to move on to this other side. I'm kind of doing the same thing. I got this one extra strand. I kind of like to break up the contour of um, hair so that it's not just one super simplistic shape. But, you know, I saw lots of different approaches to drawing uh, chibi Miku, and uh, you could certainly uh, come up with your own way of doing the hair. I mean, I, I hesitate to ever say that you should follow everything that I'm doing in this video. Go ahead and make it your own, you know. I've seen people doing really interesting things lately. That one that I did of the wood, uh, showing how to dr draw wood surfaces, boy, so many people uh, took that basic concept and adapted it into really cool drawings. Um, you know, I had chosen YouTube as an example, but I loved seeing how people um, used it for other stuff. So, uh, anyway, yeah, feel free with any of my videos to, um, you know, ignore the way I'm doing it and do it your own. Oh, wait a minute, now it's getting bumped out of the way. Can you see the hair? I'm going to have to sort of, let me readjust here a little bit on the fly. Pull back uh, so that you can see the full extent of the hair. Sorry if I kept, uh, I do this periodically. I forget what's visible and what isn't visible. Um, but um, yeah, basically you can see how I did here that, uh, that I broke the end of this one into a secondary bit and then had this sort of back behind it. And even sometimes I'll have a strand that's cutting in front just to give a little more body to it. Uh, maybe I'll do the same thing over here. Have have one part of it uh, kind of coming in front of the other to give it a little more, just a hint of three-dimensionality. I, I don't know how far I'm going to go with trying to make this look three-dimensional uh, in the final illustration. But I think you got the basics in place there. Now let's move on to uh, drawing the uh, headbands, and I think I probably better uh, refocus things to make sure I get this right. Okay, so she's got these sort of gravity-defying space-aged headbands that are um, square or sort of diamond-shaped. Um, and I'm going to have this one go basically up here, just past that first guideline. And, uh, you know, if you have any sense of um, structure uh, in, in imagining what uh, uh, such a square would look like, you can sort of... Uh, figure out where all these various lines would go. If not, you know, hit the pause button, see if you can sort of recreate uh, the structure that I'm uh, putting in place here. And then I'm going to do basically the exact same thing over here. Um, this does involve a, a bit of erasing as I draw, uh, you know, get this into place and then have to erase the hair line that was behind it. And uh, later on in the inking and coloring stage, you'll see that the, the, these uh, hair bands do have a certain um, pattern to them in terms of uh, this outside edge. But I'm just going to leave it like this for now. And uh, let's get into just a couple of these other things that I found it hard to see a lot of times. Uh, but there seems to be some communication box over here. Somebody help me understand what this is about. But it's maybe it seems almost like part of headphones. Uh, and then this, um, I would guess, somehow connects around her head to the uh, microphone that's one of these, um, you know, hands-free <laughs> microphones that's uh, sort of attached to your head. So that's why you never um, see Hatsune Miku with a microphone in her hand. She doesn't need those things, man. It's right there, part of her headgear. 
And um, let me go ahead and shift down. We're going to start working on the considerably detailed uh, uniform that she wears. So yeah, this uh, first thing that I had drawn is really quite simplified, and I'm going to begin by um, putting in her sort of sleeveless... Uh, I guess it's a vest, really. All, all vests are sleeveless, Mark. Come on, man. <laughs> a vest with sleeves on it? That, that, what is that? It's a coat. Anyway, so she's got <laughs> this vest on that um, you could think of it as like the letter W almost down here, right? But I'm not going to darken this area in too much because that's where her uh, necktie is going to go. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, collar in place. And, uh, you know, it's tricky because there are lots of details to this uh, uniform, but when you're drawing uh, a chibi version of a character, very often you want to simplify things. So I was sort of torn sometimes between trying to replicate every single detail of the uniform and just sort of ignoring some of them for the purposes of chibification. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put in her necktie, which really comes down about as low as uh, the rest of this vest that she wears. And while I've got that in place, I'm going to go ahead and put these two black uh, tie clips, I guess they are, right over there. That seems pretty crucial. Now I noticed that she had a sort of, it looked almost like a name tag area up here, and then maybe even a couple of small <clears throat> rectangles or something that's on her collar. Now I suppose we can, well, let's get to doing these uh, arm warmer sleeve uh, things. And um, you may choose not to have them quite as flared as I've done here. I'm sort of exaggerating for, uh, just I imagine, in, in sometimes with chibi stuff, you um, push it as far as it can go. So I've made this quite flared, but you, you may choose not to do that. Um, I'm not going to get too carried away with details, but there's lots of little buttons. I suppose they're sort of virtual buttons that are on her sleeve. Um, and then what's interesting to me about this character is that the sleeves come sort of deliberately down over her hands, which is nice if you'd hate drawing hands, because <laughs> you're really just drawing the tips of the fingers, really. Um, if uh, Most of the illustrations that I saw of Hatsune Miku, her hands were partially, um, or even largely, um, covered up by the, these sleeves. And notice how high up the sleeves go. They go halfway up her uh, upper arm. Uh, so I'm sort of repeating the same thing over here. You could really get lost in the details, uh, it seems to me, if, if you become committed to an absolutely faithful uh, replica of Hatsune Miku. I, I suppose a lot of this stuff is set in stone, sort of like, well, there should be a row of 16 buttons here. You only drew 15, man. That's it. I'm un unsubscribing. Rage quit. Anyway, I'm going to go down here and uh, sort of change this contour here uh, to start indicating her uh, skirt, which is a pleated uh, skirt. Uh, to me, that means we want to sort of separate it out. And what I always like to do is have some sense of structure here. So I'm going to begin by getting one sort of pleat right in the front. And then that will allow me to sort of balance things as I go along here and start to draw the other pleats. Keeping it simple. So we end up with, what is that, five pleats, basically. And um, you should, though, get a secondary line here on the skirt. And I very often will take that opportunity to give some form. You know how the, this line breaks, it's sort of staggered a little bit. That helps to convey the uh, structure of the skirt. Now, she's got these thigh-high boots. Uh, they almost look like stockings to me. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm creating a band uh, here at the top and a band over here. Those are going to get a different color. Actually, I think I'll move this down here a little um, those will be, this area will be a different color from the rest of the leggings. And, um, I've, I've drawn the leg here in a sort of hyper simplified style. I think I want to refine this a little bit, make it look a little more like a real 
leg. Um, different people have different approaches in terms of drawing chibi. I've seen very, very simplified versions of legs. Um, and then more anatomically accurate. And I guess I'm going to go ahead and get a second line down here for the bottoms of the boots because they are a different color. I don't know if you would really see them from this point of view, but I feel like the, it will look more like... It will greatly increase the mikuness, <laughs> the mikuosity, uh, if we have uh, that uh, a little hint of green down there at the bottom. Oh, and one last thing that I feel like I've forgotten. Can you believe how detailed this is, you know? If you like detailed uniforms, Hatsune, Hatsune Miku is your girl. Uh, there's just little details everywhere, all over the place. So, I think that almost gets us where we need to be. You know, I guess I might as well go ahead and show you that there are going to be separate lines here. There's this pattern, like I said, along her gravity-defying hairbands. The hairbands of the future. Get them today. Anyway, this uh, this probably gets us to where I can do the inking. And sadly, people who know my videos can predict this. That's right. Old man time lapse. <laughs> Calling him into the room. Oh, you needed me? Yes, old man time lapse. We need you so that this video doesn't go on forever. Oh, I look, I went ahead and did another one of these things where I'm drawing something you can't see. Out of frame. Shame on you, Curly. Shame on you. I'm going to refocus so that we can get the entire uh, figure in place and then uh, go ahead and do all the inking. All right, well, sorry I had to speed through all of that in time-lapse, and I kind of regret this would have been a good one maybe to have detached the paper and started spinning it around, because I ended up with some shaky lines over here <laughs> because I was fighting against the natural pivot point of my wrist. So uh, my apologies for less than stellar inking work on this one, but uh, let's go ahead and start getting into the coloring. I'm going to let this dry. Uh, a little more. Then I'm going to erase um, with a kneaded eraser, get rid of all these pencil lines, and uh, come back with some markers to begin the coloring process. All right, now the pivotal uh, choice that you make when you're coloring uh, in Hatsune Miku is this uh, bluish green. I found a marker when I was doing my uh, Minecraft Diamond Sword video. Remember that one a few months back? Uh, color from that set from this company called Spectrum, Spectrum Noir. Uh, and it's BT4 is what they call this one, but I would say any number of companies, certainly Copic, uh, other companies, will make uh, a shade that uh, is the perfect shade for uh, Hatsune Miku's uh, hair and uniform. Um, it's, uh, you, my main thing would be find something that is not too dark. You want something that's light enough that you uh, are not obscuring all of your original hard-earned artwork. Um, that's the trouble with uh, markers that are like not from an art store very often. They are super dark colors and um, you've probably had this experience. If you had a beautiful drawing and then you grabbed this marker thinking that you were going to get like a light color but you ended up just obliterating all the art with this super dark color. Um, now people may be noticing, hey Mark, what's you're using markers lately all the time. Who are you, and what have you done with the real Mark Crilly? I thought he was opposed to markers. Well, um, the truth is, uh, I do still, for most jobs, prefer watercolor, the subtlety of watercolor. Uh, and not to imply that markers are not subtle, but um, uh, they do... You know, different jobs call for different uh, materials, I think. And um, chibi illustrations, I think, sort of cry out for either... Uh, marker illustration or digital um, uh, illustration, I mean, I should say coloring. Um, not that the others won't work, but uh, there's something about these characters that I think benefit from a, a very smooth, um, professional-looking coloring job. Whereas, like, if I were doing an illustration of a forest, um, something a little more organic-looking, I would definitely prefer watercolors. Uh, something like a, a desolate um, 
post-apocalyptic decaying cityscape definitely for me I'm gonna go for watercolors for that job just uh, because it, you know I can create all these feelings of texture and so forth so much more easily uh, with watercolors how did this turn into a video about <laughs> <laughs> the differences between uh, markers and watercolor, I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, going in here and uh, getting uh, the finishing touches on this, I thought I would do some of this real-time mainly to show you where the different shades of green go, because this is um, sort of key to doing Hatsune Miku. I'm going to switch to the pointed tip here. Boy, these things are hard to open. <laughs> and uh, start showing you where some of these other colors are going to go. There is, um, of course, the, the same shade of green basically uh, is to be found in her eyes. I notice some people making her eyes much darker than others. Maybe a bit of a disagreement there. But very often the chibi illustrations of uh, Hatsune Miku had the eyes uh, very, very similar in color to the, um, the hair. And I'm going to go in here and start showing, this is uh, maybe the the crucial part for getting the uniform right, is these little bits of trim have to also be in that same color. Is this teal? Is that what this is called? This sort of greenish, bluish, aqua, uh, the necktie, all of these. That's why I say this is the crucial thing. Find the right color, uh, either in marker or whatever, colored pencil. And... Um, it'll be smooth sailing because you you use this color throughout the entire uh, uniform. Coming down here to this trim at the bottom of her skirt and then uh, also at the tops of these uh, leggings. Is that what they are? Thigh-high boots? And also at the bottom, the soles of those shoes. And I do believe I've got all of the key things there done in this color. Now, um, I could spend another, uh, you know, hour talking about all the different colors and tricks like that, but I think maybe we ought to start uh, moving along with this video. So I'm going to go ahead and kick it into time lapse. You're going to see me do the one crucial other color, um, and that is um, a, a dark gray, which I will make darker later on by way of colored pencils. Um, it really is supposed to symbolize black, I think, if I've got that right. Um, and the one final color is a sort of a lighter gray that uh, is on this vest area. But let's go ahead and use time lapse to uh, finish up the coloring. All right, well, as you can see, I did a lot of um, the coloring with colored pencil, or sort of enhanced it quite a bit with colored pencil, and I wanted to point out how there's these little uh, lights on her uh, sleeves here, and I also noticed in some illustrations there seem to be, like, lights on her skirt. It's probably, <laughs> probably a little too late for me to try to add that in, but uh, that's something you consider doing. Uh, you could consider doing um, uh, in one of your own illustrations. And uh, now what I want to do is pull out the gouache. Uh, a lot of people know that I love to add gouache to my illustrations, and I think uh, this one in particular is well suited to it because gouache tends to make things look shiny, and we all know that uh, Hatsune Miku is shiny, right? She's, <laughs> she's shiny and happy and incredibly genki. Uh, so I'm just going to show you quickly uh, in real time how I would add some uh, highlights to her hair. Um, not in a super, you know, realistic way. I'm just sort of putting a little... Um, string of them, like right across, and I notice in chibi illustrations, a lot of times uh, this is the approach. It's not so much like, oh, I'm going to try to make um, a, a real illusion of light shining, shimmering on the hair. It's almost more like a decorative touch uh, in some people's approach, and I thought that's what I would use uh, for for this illustration. I think that the hair uh, down here would probably get a secondary highlight, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, add that in, maybe just a touch wider, because uh, the hair is indeed 
so thick and full bodied there but you can see uh, you know there's a lot of different ways of doing this some people will make a more vertical type of um, highlight area that looks a little more like individual strands of hair I thought I would try this um, more um, I don't know what do you call this symbolic kind of approach it's like a symbol of a highlight <laughs> rather than an actual highlight. Let me know what you thought of that. I can try different techniques uh, in the future, but I think it's time to wind this video down. Let me go ahead and grab the books. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow down, Curly. Not so fast. My uh, viewers will not stand for me ending this illustration without blushies. And yes, I think definitely uh, Miku-chan needs uh, some blushies here, so let's go ahead and do that. Lest there be an armed uprising. <laughs> among my YouTube viewers. You forgot the blushes! Come on, guys! Take him down! Anyway, um, this is uh, the final little touch that brings this illustration to a close. Now I think I can go grab those books. Always like to end my videos by thanking those generous souls who have helped me out by buying uh, one or more of my books. We got Brody's Ghost, we got Mickey Falls, my two graphic novel series, as well as Mastering Manga 1 and Mastering Manga 2, my How to Draw books. Really am always very deeply appreciative uh, of people who help me out that way. But let's go ahead and pick up this pencil so that we can lay it down. And thank you all one last time for watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back with another one real soon.